Social commentator, historian and best-selling author Gordon McLaughlin has published over 18 books including his groundbreaking work The Passionless People which took a close look at the Kiwi psyche. Now his latest book is Great Tales from Rural New Zealand and he joins us now to tell us all about it. Welcome Gordon. Welcome, nice to be here. Thank you for joining us yeah. on the show. So you're, you've recently wrote a book called uh, it, was, it was Great Tales from New Zealand History wasn't it and this yes. is a follow-on to that. Yes, that sold so well and it sells all the time. Publishers love books that keep on selling, you see. So they <laughs> so do write another, another one. one write another one. So what's this one about then? This is a, a, a the historian. They're really historic tales, from, but they're based entirely in rural New Zealand. The other one, the earlier book, was based on New Zealand in general. This one's uh, entirely in rural New Zealand. Wow. How do you come across these great yarns? Because I suspect they're not written down, they're just tales that have been passed on, and then you've obviously had to go and talk individually to all these people. How do you find them? No, not really at all. I, I, I speak to some of them. Most of them are dead, of course, right. so it's hard to speak to them. But I have, a, I have an office full of, of uh, second-hand books, pamphlets, papers, government reports, uh, that I've collected over the years, and I've collected them from some of the people I write about. Wow. Uh, so I have all this information. I could write this pretty well without leaving my office. So where did you find all of these pamphlets? And well, these books? Uh, for a long time I travelled around New Zealand working. I was editor of the Journal of Agriculture for a while, and then I was working for the Weekly News, and I worked for the Herald, and I travelled around to almost every town in New Zealand. And in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s, every town in New Zealand had A, a bookshop, and B, a secondhand bookshop. Ah, oh, nice. And I used to roam around the secondhand bookshop. Were you that guy that they went, yes, he's in town again, yeah. filling up your bags with all the old pamphlets <laughs> right. that no one wanted? The prices went up. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon's coming quick here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you've got all these great stories, and you've obviously learned a lot about you know, the early settlers in New Zealand. Yep. How tough was it for them back then? Incredibly tough. I mean, especially the women that arrived here early on when they went to nuclear farms and they had to bring up children, make the cheese, um, you know, do all the household work, create the food while the old bloke was out cutting the trees down and mil later milking cows. It was incredibly tough for women. Some of the farms were so remote that when, before they went to bed every night, if they had enough money to get a horse, they'd saddle the horse in case they had to ride off for the doctor during the night if they had three or four kids. Wow. Gosh. It was pretty tough time, you know. It was tough stuff. And I think I've got it tough. I only have to drive six yeah, k's to work. that's right. <laughs> in <Yeah>. my car. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think we, you know, because it's interesting now with the way, I guess, health systems are happening in the country and, and services for people, are we going back to that old system slowly as they shut down police stations and shut down hospitals in rural Schools. areas? It's an entirely different world because people were so in interdependent then. They had to rely on one another. You couldn't not rely on your neighbour right. because he, he had to rely on you. Uh, nowadays it's not quite the same. People are much more independent. Uh, they rely on institutions more rather than their neighbours. Uh, so it's a different world, really. And the well, internet. <laughs> yes, and the internet. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to talk more about that because I reckon you've probably got a favourite tradition or maybe even a favourite character from this latest book that Gordon has. We're going to hear about that just after this. We're very lucky to be joined by Gordon McLaughlin, whose new book, Great Tales from Rural New Zealand, shares 48 very special stories from our history. So, Gordon, just before we went to Holly, I was thinking you must have a favourite character, somebody that you've come to love in this book. Can you tell us about it? Yes, I will. It's a, a, a man called Huey Smith. He was a five-foot-high Scotsman who emigrated to New Zealand and became known as the Bard of Anangahua. <laughs> he, he was a poet. And in his time, he was very famous. I mean, he went down to the Needham Exhibition and read his poetry, and, and it was published and sold very well. And then in the early 1940s, a woman was absolutely wrapped with his poetry again. I mean, he'd been long dead. In fact, he lived till about 99, uh, and just before he died, the year before he died, his house burned down. And he was so loved in Angahua, they built him a little house for him, and then he died. But his, uh, this verse, his execrable verse, it was republished in 1941 by a woman who said, we must not let the fruit of this noble mind go unremarked. Nice. And it's, it's incredibly <laughs> funny poetry. It really is, you know. One of them he wants to be, he writes a, an ode to Jean, and he wants more than anything else to be Jean's hot water bottle. <laughs> well, I can totally understand that. That it. makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So how long does it take to research these books? I mean, to, to write a book, I mean, how long does it take? Because there must be so much research in there. Yeah, well, I kind of live with it, you know. I mean, I'm reading all the time. I'm reading historical uh, works all the time. And you know, New Zealand is a very literary 
literate and have been very literate from the beginning. In almost every region and town in New Zealand has a historian. It's usually a woman. It's usually a woman who's retired. She's got rid of the kids. She's got interested in the community and she'll write a book about it. And there's just hundreds and hundreds of them. I don't think there's a country in the world better documented than New Zealanders mm. at that level, you know. Which is great, and thanks to people like yourself as well. Speaking of documenting New Zealand, Passionless People back in 1976, yeah. um, a little bit controversial at the time. You described New Zealanders as uh, um, smiling zombies, yeah. I think. And then you kind of revisited that in 2012. I did. Uh, what was the change, do you think, between... Not the, a lot, really. Not a lot? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ask Gordon who he thinks is a smiling zombie, your example. Oh, uh, no, I got to go. Can I answer that? I'll tell you, I'll tell you who Gordon just said before. John Key, apparently. Yes, yes. Example of a smiling zombie. It, it, it is. He's a classic example. I call him mollifier in chief. Right. He's always mollifying people. He's always telling people not to worry. He's, um, and I've just recently been in Australia, and I thought, what a much more electric and interesting society it is. They're arguing about everything all the time over there. Well, but you don't forget that. everybody's so calm and <laughs> relaxed here, and... Uh, I give talks to uh, American tourists who come here, and one of the women said to me one day, she said, I'd like to live here because the people are so calm. And I said, the word is comatose. <laughs> I think a certain amount of laid backness is quite yes. nice. <laughs> well, I think we're going to say that we're probably just a bit too chill. Well, I've got, a, I've got a story in here about she will be right and some and tracking some of those old sayings that mm. uh, New Zealand has lived by for a long time. We, we love still that, do. One, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, nice. Well, look, we could sit and talk for hours, but I tell you what, just go and get his book because it'll have some more great yarns in it. Great tales from rural New Zealand is available now from all good bookstores. Thank you so much, Gordon, for coming in. Pleasure to come. Appreciate it.